Hello, and welcome to the Tartan Topiary. I'm Mary, and on this channel, I always feature a book on the topic of interior design or gardening. And I share how this book has inspired me or just general musings of life. I hope you will take a moment and relax as we look at Alexa Hampton, The Language of Interior Design. Alexa Hampton is an American interior designer who lives in New York City with her husband and children. She has been hailed as one of America's top designers by both El Decor and House Beautiful. She was inducted into Architectural Digest's AD 100 Hall of Fame. Alexa Hampton is the daughter of acclaimed interior designer Mark Hampton, who was celebrated by Architectural Digest as one of the world's 20 greatest designers of all time. After her father's death in 1998, she became the president of Mark Hampton LLC, which is her father's interior design company. Under her leadership, she has advanced her career and her father's legacy of elegance, practicality, and classical-based interiors for modern living. Alexa has written three books. This one was published in 2010, and it is her first. Later this month, I will feature her newest book, which was published just a few months ago. In this volume, The Language of Interior Design, Alexa Hampton writes about good design and the vocabulary to speak it and the elements that define it. At an early age, she began traveling the world by her father's side, touring the great architectural landmarks and discovering beauty as she trained her eye, becoming a designer herself. As one of America's most influential designers, Alexa Hampton provides a tour of stunning residences from her very own portfolio, 18 classic spaces that are illustrated in rich detail. Throughout the book, Alexa outlines in great detail how she cultivates her design using contrast, proportion, color, and balance. Among the residences featured are a landmark 1912 McKim, Mead, and White restoration on Fifth Avenue in Manhattan, an eclectic house by the sea that is layered in textures, patterns, 
and color. A contemporary apartment distinguished by simple geometry and clean lines. And Hampton's very own apartment, filled with an exquisite collection of architectural elements. All of the rooms that Hampton showcases speak the language of design, a language that Hampton believes most anyone can master, as she explains how to retain a timeless aesthetic with her design expertise. She writes in the foreword, There is a language of interior design, a vocabulary that can be studied, absorbed, understood, and spoken. I believe that decorating is not simply a set of arbitrary ideas, an eclectic assortment of favorite objects, or merely mimicking current trends. Good design is a clear lexicon. It is grounded in logic and aesthetic, with the work and well-trained eyes of artists, architects, builders, and designers. In every project I undertake, I consider four basic elements of design. They are contrast, proportion, color, and balance. And in this book, Alexa Hampton delightfully details each one. Alexa Hampton, The Language of Interior Design. This book is 256 pages. It is published by Clarkson Potter Publishers of New York. It originally retailed for $60. Ah, oh, Mary, what are you doing, my wee lassie? I have more joy to spread, more gifts to give. Have you leave of your senses, girl? I know I just slaughtered the Scottish accent, but that's what I'm hearing these Santas tell me in my head. It's pretty loud and clear. I've got to do it. But let's answer some questions. I received many great questions, and so did Daniel. I may have to devote next week's video just for his answers. I thought I would get a few things done while answering mine. This first question has been asked the most often. Where do you keep all the books that you review, and have you had to build a new library onto your home? I've always been a book collector, and especially design books, since the 1980s. I do have a large collection of books, and I've lived in three homes in the last 35 years. The first two houses did have a proper library, and I was able to store the bulk of my collection in one room. In this house, which is kind of ironic because it's probably the largest house I've lived in, there is no designated library. 
so there are collections of books in almost every room. In my first house, we actually did build an addition, and it became our library. The layout of that house was such that we had to build the addition off of an existing bedroom. So I made the door that divided the two rooms into a bookshelf. It was sort of like a secret door that opened into a secret library. That was a lot of fun. And when my children were younger, they really enjoyed that room. My second house, and I apologize for the quality of this photograph, had an extra den. And with the addition of bookshelves, it served as a perfectly fine library. This is actually the inspiration that I'm using to create a library in this house. And that is a project that I've promised myself I will undertake this year. I hope to turn this informal den into a proper library while still keeping the feel of a den. I will document this process on the channel. I'm going to change the color palette while keeping the upholstered furniture and adding multiple bookshelves to the room. I hope to start this project in February. The next question is, did you ever work in interior design, decorating, or floral design? And what inspired you to start the channel? I have always enjoyed interior design, even as a child. I appreciated how a pretty room could create atmosphere and make me feel happy and comfortable, or an environment that delighted the senses and set a mood. I loved watching Bewitched, Mary Tyler Moore, and The Brady Bunch for many reasons, but I loved visually exploring the sets and taking an inventory of the accessories, the art, the fabric, and the arrangement of the furniture. As a child, I was always more interested in rearranging Barbie's townhouse instead of dreaming up the drama of Barbie's life. In college, I majored in interior design and graduated with a degree in that in 1991. During college, I did do an internship for a local design firm and was hired after I graduated but I only worked there about a year. After the birth of my daughter, I was fortunate enough to be able to stay home with her, and so I did. And then I had two more children. When they were old enough to go to school, I accepted a teaching position, which allowed me to have the same schedule they did. This was ideal for me, and I kept that job for almost 20 years. During that time, I did take small design jobs for friends and family, but mainly the design career was put on the back burner. One of the most fulfilling things I've done in regards to design was during COVID. My husband and I bought an old craftsman style home that was in such disrepair. It was built in 1922, and we spent about a year restoring it. I'll try to share that experience with you on the channel. As far as being a floral designer, my daughter does own a successful floral shop and she mainly designs for weddings and corporate events. I have taken a few classes in floral design, but I'm in no way a professional. She does think that I'm good enough to work for her and I will do that occasionally. Okay, the last part of that question was, what inspired you to begin a YouTube channel? I occasionally watched YouTube and enjoyed it very much. In 2021, Daniel and I were asked to open our garden to the public during Wilmington's Azalea Festival. This was truly an honor to me, and I loved my garden, but in the back of my head, I thought, will people actually pay to see my garden along with about 10 others? Well, the ladies in the garden club thought so, but I knew that I needed to up my game. And this is where YouTube came in. I searched high and low and watched anything I could on garden design, 
southern gardens, garden patios, and so on. I was so excited by the creativity and the unique creators, especially the content that was calming and educational. It really stirred something inside me, and I was inspired to provide something similar. It had to be something that I enjoyed and on a topic that I knew a little bit about. So I thought, what do I have that I can share with others? And I thought about my book collection, and the idea was born. The idea was actually the easiest part. I had never used iMovie. I knew nothing about lighting, audio, or editing. And if you watch some of my early videos, this is painfully obvious. As a matter of fact, the first couple of videos, I didn't even use voiceover. I just showed the book. But these videos did get a fair number of views. And after a few videos, I worked up the courage to do a voiceover. And that video did fairly well. The channel was monetized in about a month. And from what I've heard by other creators, that's pretty quick. I felt like people were enjoying the content or finding it valuable in some way. And I enjoyed doing it. So for a year and a half, without missing one week, I've published a video on YouTube. Next question. What is your favorite book? This is a very difficult question because I love so many of my design books and for different reasons. I have several that are signed. Um, one by Charles Faudre, Furlow Gatewood, Mario Boada, and these are all designers that I've loved and are no longer with us. There are some books that I love for the text and some that I love for the illustrations. I do have two favorite books and neither is a design book. One is a first edition Charles Dickens, which was given to me by my grandmother. And the other is a book written by Sir Robert Douglas entitled Scottish Peerage that belonged to my great-great-grandfather. It was published in 1764. Okay, last two questions. How do you choose the books you feature? And what is your favorite weekly meal? And how do you prepare it? I choose the books I feature in many ways. Um, suggestions by viewers, or according to the season or time of year. It can be an inspiration I've had. For example, this week, I read an article about Mark Hampton and his experience decorating Blair House. It mentioned Alexa Hampton in the article, so I picked her first book. I've had this book probably 10 years. I do try to purchase newly published books as I really enjoy them. And these are the ones that people may want to purchase, but are hesitant to do so without a good preview. I'll also share in the description of the video some of my favorite places to purchase these books, and in many cases at discounted prices. To keep this video from running too long, I'll answer the question about my favorite meal next week, and I'll let Daniel answer all of his questions. I hope you will join me next week for that, and we'll look at De Cornet, hand-painted interiors.